number three Stanford taking on number six Oregon, all part of the Pac-12 on ESPN. Major shakeup this past weekend as the top three teams in the AP poll all went down, including the Oregon Ducks. So now this is what the Pac-12 standings look like. These two teams, of course, will meet one more time down at Maples. This is the first of two meetings that we are absolutely ecstatic for. Adam Amin, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe in a moment as well. And with Oregon playing on ESPN for the first time this season, it is our first look at the marquee player in the sport who is coming off a record-extending 22nd career triple-double at Sabrina Ionescu. You said it. She's the biggest star in women's college basketball. She could have been the number one pick in last year's WNBA draft, chose to come back from her senior year, and continues to add to her legacy. This is a player who is averaging nearly a triple-double, and you see the career record 22 for her, and she is absolutely deadly in the pick and roll. She knows how to read it. She is so good when she is with her teammate, Ruthie Heber. She reads the defense here. The defender comes over. There's help side the other way, but she can attack and get to the rim. Her preference, if she can, is to pass to her teammate here. Her defender gets caught up on the screen, makes the perfect pass because she has the vision. And finally on the switch, you've got it big between you and the basket. You're not going to attack. Instead, she has the pull up. It is a beautiful thing to watch. Sabrina Ionesco in the pick and roll. As part of one of the best offenses, arguably the best offense in the country. They are very deep as well. But Holly Road tonight, that depth is going to be tested by a very fun young group for this Stanford Cardinal team. That's right. Stanford does not have the experience as this Oregon team does, but they do have a lot of talent. And this is one of the most versatile classes that Tara Vanderveer has ever had. Everybody brings a little something different, whether it's Haley Jones and her scoring, or Hannah Jump and her deadly three-point shooting, or Ashton Prechtel. She has been a force around the rim, but it's really the monster of Fran Belibi. You guys will not believe what this young lady did in pregame warm-ups. Yes, you may have heard about her in high school, but here she is live and in college basketball. Hello, we all have chills when she threw down a pregame warm-up. We cannot wait to see what this talented class brings tonight. Tara Vanderveer told us they've been thrown into the deep end of the pool all night, but today they will be thrown into the ocean. It's going to be crazy. We'll see how they handle it here. Stanford's lone loss of the season was on the road. They went to Texas as the number one team in the country and suffered their only loss of the year. They've won their last five since, including a 4-0 start to Pac-12 play. But tonight, they come into the hornet's nest that is Matthew Knight Arena in Eugene. Nadia Fingal for the tip, and the Ducks start with the ball. 13-2 on the season. Lone loss is coming to Louisville, and then last week, part of the Arizona State upset fest as they knocked off both Oregon schools. Aaron Boley misses a three, and it's rebounded by Kiana Williams, Stanford's excellent point guard. Stanford started out in a man-to-man -man defense, but you see, saw Kiana Williams playing way off Mignon Moore. She is going to be the rover, the one helping inside defensively. Trying to connect with Haley Jones, the nation's number one recruit, got caught up on the defense and a turnover for the Cardinal. There's Oregon starting five, the most efficient offense in the country, according to our friends at Her Hoop Stats. Number two in scoring behind Baylor. Number one in the country in assists per game. Of course, Ionescu makes it all work. Satu Sabali a little bit too strong. And a foul called on the rebound action as Lacey Hull snared it. <laughs> Kelly Graves turned 57 on Tuesday. Now in his sixth season as the head coach of the Ducks. Took this team to its first ever Final Four a year ago. Ruthie Heber picked up the first foul of the game. Ball to Fingal. Lacey to Lexi, her twin sister, off target. And Ionescu there for a rebound, something she does exceptionally well, averaging nine per game. Pull up, Ionescu. Around and down.
So we've already seen most of the skill set on display, the rebound ability, the pass ability, and now the shot making. I mean, that's what makes her so dangerous, right, is she can do everything on the floor. She's the undeniable leader of this team. Nice job by Stanford getting the ball inside to Fingal. Fingal having a career season coming off the ACL injury a year ago that shut her down in January. Now Stanford on the perimeter is going to switch screens and they've got sized and able to do it, but Sabrina, it doesn't matter. She has size herself, so even with a long arm coming at her, she can shoot over it. So much attention defensively is going to go towards Sabrina Inescu because of how important she is to what Oregon does. Allison Lang's the all-time leading scorer in Oregon history. Inescu closing in on her. Nobody's made more threes, nobody has dished more assists than Inescu in an Oregon uniform. Mignon Moore got her hands in the passing lane, something she does very well, but Stanford retains it. Williams, just enough space to sink a three and give Stanford its first lead. Keanu Williams is so important to Stanford's success. When she plays well, when she shoots the ball well, they tend to win. They go as she goes. Just 29% from three-point range this year, but has been much better than that in her career. Inescu using the crossover. Tipped by Fingal. Inescu runs it down, but was out of bounds. And Tara Vanderveer in her 34th season at the helm of this Stanford program. A deep run for Stanford into the postseason this year. Could see Tara Vanderveer surpass Pat Summit as the all-time wins leader in coaching history. Hebert out on Williams on a switch. Did you see more fighting inside? Yeah. She had to guard Fingal, and eventually Fingal ends up with the two. Oh, yeah, on that switch, though, so much, uh, giving up so much size, and Mignon Moore continued to fight in front. Here is Moore, sinking along two. Stanford wants that. Yeah. Defensively, the more shots that Mignon Moore takes, the happier Tara Vanderveer will be. She has not proven herself in terms of range so far this season. We get a foul called here. Holly on Mignon Moore. Well, guys, you're going to see that often this year, that people are going to leave Mignon Moore open and make her make that shot so that they can double Ruthie Hebert in the post. She said she's aware of it. She's only shooting 28% from the three-point line, but she was the last person to leave shoot around today. She was the first person out here taking extra shots. She said, I have confidence in my shot. I just have to get it back. I know that will be tested all season long. She's the first grad transfer to play for Kelly Graves. Three years at USC in the conference. Now a grad transfer for Oregon. Fingal roll into the rim. That's what she'd love to have back. Stanford's having a lot of success, though. Getting yeah. the ball into Fingal in the paint. Heber gets the feed from Sabali. That's such a difficult pick and roll to defend as well. Size to size. And, and with Sabali, she can shoot the three. She's struggling a little bit from three this year, but can shoot the three and drive. Williams takes a deep one over Sabali. Hebert went down, but is back up. Here is Sabali, trying to pick up her three-point shooting. And two losses this year against Louisville and Arizona State. The three-point numbers in general for both Sabali, Ionescu, and the rest of the team really were down. Yeah, and, and Bowley included. I mean, a three-point, how they're shooting the three-point <laughs> shot as Stanford hits one is a huge indicator for Oregon's success. Lexi Hall drills one there. And again, we see Haley Jones as the big defending Mignon Moore where she can help off and that's what Moore has to do. She has to find other ways to get involved here. It's not just a jump shot, it's driving. Kelly Graves will also look to have her a screener in different actions. He is very aware that that's how teams are defending Mignon Moore. Mignon Moore scored over 1,100 points in her three years at USC and a lot of that came on plays just like that. Jones surrounded, Ionescu ripped it away. She's there for three. Heber the offensive rebound. Yes. 
Ionescu, the drive and the kick, but a traveling violation. It'll be Stanford ball on the other side. Both teams finding a way to get it done outside, inside. Hull here with the three, such a big part of Stan what, what Stanford wants to do and always a bonus for Oregon when Mignon Moore can score. Another wild weekend and what's been a wild season so far. These three top ten teams all went down on Thursday, including the number one team in the country, UConn. So we thought, all right, maybe the Ducks or Beavers will sweep the Arizona schools. They'll be at the number one spot. But sure enough, Arizona State upsets both Oregon and Oregon State. So South Carolina is the fourth different number one team we've had in the country this year. First time in 15 years we've had four different number ones during a season. And we've never had five different number ones in the AP poll era going back to 1936. Holly Rowe, you were just in the Oregon huddle. What'd you learn? That's right. Kelly Graves just told his team, look, we haven't run one good full offensive set yet. We're not staying organized. Let's try to be a little more organized. I want a riser. I want a roller. Let's get to the second side, to the third side, before we start breaking down and going one-on-one. -on -one. A little more organization, space the floor, and be creative. And Holly, that was his message in the shoot-around today. Space floor, be patient, make the defense work side to side. Don't just settle for the first option. Southern trying to push the tempo and then get into the offense. Sabali got a good look, but another Oregon offensive rebound. And of course, it's UNESCO on the glass. Hebert got a breather. Lydia Giomi is in. Moore couldn't hit the three, and Stanford clears. A great pass from Hull to Hull. Lacey to Lexi. Lacey's one inch taller, but 20 minutes younger. And such a big part of what Stanford wants to do. They want to run up and down the floor. This is a deep team. They feel like they can tire out Oregon. There's UNESCO behind the Gioni screen. Oregon's three-point shooting was exceptional last year. They were the best three-point shooting team in the country. They're 0 for 7 to start this game. And from last year to this year, that percentage has gone down about six points. And this is an Oregon team when Sometimes when they're missing, they tend to take too many of them right. to make up for it. And I mean, seven shots, seven threes already at this point of the game. That's not what Kelly Graves wants. Giomi knocked it away from Fingal, and the jump ball will keep it at this end of the floor with Stanford with seven on the shot clock. Great college basketball lineup stacked on Saturday. Number 10 Kentucky has been upset a couple of times lately, but they're going to go on the road to Fayetteville to take on Arkansas. Then Holly Rowe will be in Louisville for the Sonic Blockbuster as 11th ranked Louisville takes on third ranked Duke. That's Saturday at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. I mean, just look at the difference. Clear not, cut, right? Yeah, I mean, not only in their ability to score, but making threes. And when their guards are struggling to shoot, and, and make no mistake, it's their guards that are struggling from the three-point line. Uh, Oregon can struggle. And right now, a couple subs in, better three-point shooters, but also you see them working the offense side to side, get a little bit more action. Exactly what Holly Rowe reported. Kelly Graves wanted it. They get the result they want. UNESCO finally drills one. So you got UNESCO out there along with Taylor Chavez and Jazz Shelley, the freshman. Both are 45% or better. That might spark Oregon here as Sabali takes the charge. And it's important for Satu Sabali to do other things. And you saw it there. Mm -hmm. Kelly Graves is talking to us this morning about how he needs a little bit more effort, a little more energy from her. She really struggled last weekend. Zero assists against the Arizona teams and 12 turnovers. Yep. She already has an assist here. She's missed her shots, but there, a big charge. Foul called on the freshman, Hannah Jump. Hebert back in the game as well. Challenged by Ashton Prechtel, the 6'5 freshman, going up top. And Rebecca, you're talking about Satu Sabali having a better impact on this team. She actually sat down and watched some film one on one with Kelly Graves a couple of days ago. And she said what she took away from that film session is that she's got to be more aggressive. She said, I can't let my scoring be the thing that I'm worried about. I have to let my rebounding and my defense be the things that drive me and get me into a better game. So I love it that she's the one out there taking a charge. That's exactly exactly what she took away from that film session. Do the other little things. And that's something you really have to focus on when you're not scoring well. 
because you have to find other ways to get your confidence when your shot is not going in. Rebounds, defense, effort plays, those will do it. First free throws on either side after the Keanu Williams foul. There's a switch as Williams is picked up by Hebert. Call on the drive with the right hand flip. Lacey Hall's got a couple of buckets. The Hall sisters have teamed up for 10 of Stanford 17. And Stanford has had patience running their stuff and, and working it side to side. Stanford's a top 10 efficiency offense in the country as well. Ionescu turns it over. That was a big factor for Oregon last week. They had a brutal weekend against the Arizona schools holding on to the basketball. Ionescu reading the ball movement and then running into Infinity Robinson, the official. It'll stay with Stanford with 16 to shoot. And really nice job by Sabrina to disrupt that because Stanford ball, ball movement Excellent. was really, really yeah. good. Sharp, crisp passes side to side. They will spread you out. They have shooters at every position except the five spot, although Fingal can step out and hit an occasional three. Williams traveled, had a hole open up and an angle to drive, but picked it, up the foot before she put the ball down. And we've seen Oregon switch it up defensively. They've gone some man-to-man. -man. They've gone their 1-2-2 two, two zone. They've gone a 2-3 zone. Both of these teams played one of their best defensive games against one another a year ago. Oregon held Stanford at Maples to 44 points in that blowout win. And then Stanford repaid the favor in the Pac-12 championship, holding Oregon to a season-low 57. Ionescu missed the layup at close range, and Stanford can hold for the final shot if they want. Hull instead will drive it a little out of control. You've got to hold for the final shot yeah. in that possession. You have to. And she, it looked like she got fouled, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to give it Oregon another opportunity to score. They have one here with Ionescu. Step back at the buzzer. Cold shooting for the Ducks. They trail by four, but Sabrina Ionescu on the marquee and on display for the first time nationally this year. A couple of buckets, including the lone three for Oregon in the first quarter. It's a four-point game. She could have been the number one pick in last year's WNBA draft, but in the Players' Tribune wrote the article that said, I have unfinished business. A social media star with the abilities that she's shown on the basketball court. Sabrina Ionescu has Holly become somewhat of a living legend on campus already in this her senior year. That's right. I love that the student union is devoted to the women's basketball team on campus. We don't see that often in college sports. But Sabrina said with that comes a lot of outside noise. You know, we talked to her teammates. Are they jealous that she's getting all this attention? And to a person, they said absolutely not. She's earned it and she deserves it. As for her, she said, I'm not satisfied. I know how hard it was to get to the Final Four last year, and we still didn't win it. She said, I'm blocking all of that outside noise out and focusing on every single day. Bold shooting start, but Hebert gets back on the board with a big field goal to make it a two-point game. So what do we see out of that timeout? In the first quarter, Oregon was one of nine from the three-point line and Ruthie Hebert had one shot. Yeah. Immediately, Ruthie Hebert surrounded by four shooters. She has space. Oregon goes right into her. She needs those touches. It's a little bit of a difference when Mignon Moore is on the floor. Late in the clock, Ionescu picks the passing lane. Got to whip it back inside for Hebert. Good job by Haley Jones stepping in defensively. Williams got defended by Jazz Shelley. Bowley on the deck to take it away. These are the top two scoring offenses in the Pac-12. Oregon's number two in the country behind Baylor. Both teams under 20 in the first quarter. Hebert, another interior touch moving around Fingal. You got to give her the basketball. And when Mignon Moore was in the game and her defender could help off, there was an extra body in the paint. It's not there now. There's room for Ruthie Hebert to move. 
Hall backs up for a three. Lacey Hall, in just her second start of the year, is playing really well. Tara Vanderveer told us Lacey and Lexi Hall have to play well here. It's not only because of their size on the defensive end, but offensively they can spread you out. They can both make threes. They've come through here so far in this game. NBA Friday doubleheader on ESPN. I'm headed to Philadelphia to see this one. Bulls and 76ers at 7 Eastern, and then Blazers and Mavericks. Luka Doncic. I can call him the Sabrina Ionesco of the NBA right now, the triple-double <laughs> machine that has been outstanding so far for Dallas. Badly want to see him make the playoffs. Here's Ionescu. Buries another three. Here's a nice, fun comparison. Ionescu averaging a triple-double for every... Or I, guess it, I guess it's a better way to say this. 18% of the games she's played in have led in a triple-double. Doncic about 20% of the games he's played in as Ashton Prechtel knocks down a three She can hit it from that range at six foot five and now the lineup that Stanford has all five players are proficient from the three-point line and I beg your pardon my fault that was a long two but Prechtel is a 48% three-point shooter from out there Speaking of good shooters Taylor Chavez can't connect I Still think Oregon's taking too many of them Early in the season, Kelly Graves said that. He said, we're taking too many threes, and they're from too deep. They had corrected that the last few games, but here early in this one, they're taking too many threes. Chavez wrapped up Williams. It'll stay here with Stanford. They averaged 31 three-point attempts in the first 10 games of the year. And as you mentioned, Rebecca, a concerted effort to minimize that. Already 11 in this game. Which is fine if you're shooting a really high percentage, that, yeah. but they're not. they're not. Williams from the foul line. Holy squares the rebound. Offensive foul. They get it on Lydia Giomi. Hip maybe? I think so. I think her base was a little too wide, and I think she was sliding her hip in. Ooh. I don't know. But the thing is, you have to be completely still, especially when you're on that part of the floor, and you're as tall as she is, because if you're moving, everybody can see it. An official will look for that indicator. Prechtel against Giomi. Tough shot. Rebounded by Ionescu. For the lead, it's Shelly. Long rebound snared by Hall, but it's going to stay with Oregon. Haley Jones will check back in for the Cardinal. And with Jones coming in, Satu Sabali quickly comes to the scorer's table. Tara Vanderveer said this is a Final Four type game in Oregon's arena. It doesn't get much harder. Has a kind of playoff feel to it already tonight. Ionescu steps back. Another three for Sabrina Ionescu, her third. First Oregon lead since the first two points of the game. Haley Jones with a strong take, the number one player out of high school putting it down. How about that move in that moment? When Oregon's on a run, you feel like the crowd's about to come alive. Wow, nice move by the freshman. Pac-12 freshman of the week had a couple of good games in the back-to-back -back outings against Cal, average 19 last weekend. Inescu trying to beat Hull. Excellent defense by Lexi Hull. And Jones again, in and out. And snared by Chavez. Numbers for Oregon. Sabali. That one was easy. Great patience by Ionescu. She knew Sabali was coming, waited for the perfect moment to deliver the pass. Hall off target. Rebounded by Sabali. Yeah, that shot was rushed. You did not need that shot right there. Inescu, the hesitation, and draws the foul. 
couple of free throws coming up on the other side for Sabrina Ionescu, the triple-double machine. Satu Savali running the right side. I'm coming, girl, I'm coming. Well, of course, Sabrina knows it, delivers it on the money. <laughs> I want to know if Coach Landers has figured out a way to turn the name Sue into two syllables. I feel like if anybody can, he can. isn't it Andy Landers? I think so. The syrupy tones of uh, our friend Andy <laughs> Landers. Well, he made a great point, though, too. Give the ball to Ruthie Hebert when she's in the game. Not in the game right now, but Oregon's one of the best two-point field goal percentage teams in the country, largely due to Hebert. Yeah, she needs to get more touches when she's back in. Inescu has given Oregon its largest lead at three. That gets cut down by Haley Jones, who's had a couple of big buckets in key moments. Yeah, she's really played well. And just look at her, you know, 6'1", 6'2", and she has the ability to drive, playing out on the perimeter. Really high basketball IQ. Tara Vanderveer raved about that today. Fran Belibi trying to guard against Sabali. Here comes Jones on the spin. Draws the foul and will go to the line. Foul goes against Taylor Chavez for first. I just love how Haley Jones looks to attack. Her demeanor pretty much always stays the same. Yep. Number one recruit out of high school. First one that Stanford has had since Chene Obumake back in 2009. In fact, she and Kiana Williams are the only two top ten recruits for Tara Vanderveer since Chene came to Stanford. Jones misses both free throws though here. Now Anna Wilson, who played big minutes against Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, tasked with defending Sabrina Ionescu. That's a tall task right now. And her defense wasn't bad. It was re screen, re-screen, continue to work. Ionescu, the game high, 15 points so far. Tough step back by Kiana Williams. They really leaned on her in that game against Cal this past weekend. She took 18 shots, a career high, scored 21 points. <laughs> wow, Jazz <laughs> Shelley. How about that from the freshman from down under? I mean, we knew she could shoot. I didn't know she had a, quite a crossover <laughs> like that. Jones rebounded by Ionescu. Sabali, three. Wilson can't connect. Savali the rebound. Oregon with its largest lead at six. And extended it without Hebert on the floor. Two-player game. Yanescu clutched. Tapped it alive. And then tried to save it on the sideline. It'll be Stanford ball. Sabrina Ionescu has just come alive. She was struggling a bit with her shot early, but here, screen, re-screen, crossover again, and finishing inside with the left. She is going to work the screen. And then Satu Sabli. She has been struggling from the perimeter this season, but hits a big one up top. That three put her over 2,000 career points. Triple-double watch for Ionescu. Coming off the fourth of her season, the 22nd of her storied career. Tough take by Jones. Fingal the offensive rebound. Battling for it again, going down to the deck. And Nicole Malloy will have it as a jump ball going to Oregon. Mignon Moore is going to come back into the game. Chavez will come off, so they trade a three-point shooter for a driver and a good defender. And this is where you would like to see Ruthie Hebert get a touch, but there might not be as much space in the paint because you can play off of more. You do get her a touch from Ionescu. Double comes over from Hull, and Stanford forces a turnover. Lacey to Jones. Six big points in this second quarter for Haley Jones. Stanford really wants to get out and run every opportunity they can get.
More for Sabali. Good closeout by Lacey Hall. Williams with a tough step back. Hebert with the long rebound. With the way Oregon is switching big little pick and rolls, I would like to see Williams back it out and see if she can get into Fingal with a guard on her. Hall hit the deck and Hebert drove to the rim to get the feed. That's not an easy finish. No. Lots of players around her, bodies around her. She is so good at keeping her eyes on the rim. Doesn't see what else is around her. Her focus is exemplary. Four shots, four makes for one of the most efficient players that has ever worn an Oregon uniform. Williams, the floater won't go down. Sabali tried a quick touch it to Hebert after she realized Hall had hit the deck. Foul's called. How often have we seen this? Sabrina Ionescu pick and roll to Ruby Hebert. But look at that, she gets hit, still finishes, eyes stay on the rim. Lacey Hall picked up the foul. Hebert 68.7% from the floor, third in the country entering action today. The second in the country each of the last two years at the end of the seasons. Ionescu, Sabali, had to recover. Final seconds ticking away, and Hull traveled with the ball. That's a tough break for Stanford. And yeah, Hull had played great defense on the, the screen on Sabrina, fighting over it. She's worked really hard to do that all game long. Here's Hebert. First miss of her night. And it'll be a six-point Oregon lead at the halftime break. 15 points, five rebounds, four assists, and a couple of steals for Ionescu. And right now she's with our Holly Rowe. Sabrina, at what point did you feel like your offense finally started to get a little bit organized in that first half? It hasn't really. We're getting some stops, some easy transitions, but we haven't, we're not playing to uh, where we need to be playing right now on the offensive end. How do you fix it? We're going to go in there and regroup, slow down, keep getting stops, and keep getting back in transition on defense to, in order for us to get some stops. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. For Stanford, it was Lacey Hall in her second start of the year, the sophomore leading the way with a, a six-point Oregon lead. Time for halftime. Maria Taylor, coach in Sue Bird. The Thursday showcase in Eugene, Oregon, and a six-point Ducks lead led by Sabrina Ionescu, who started 0 for 3 from three-point range, made three of her last four. Ten of her 15 points came in the second quarter. Five rebounds and four assists for the all-time men's and women's Division I triple-double leader. Adam Amin, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, your favorite triple-double on Thursday nights. Just give me a sense of Sabrina, and then we'll talk Stanford. I mean, Sabrina just did what she does. I mean, she's always the most competitive player on the floor, trying to find a way to win. And we saw so much of what she can do in that first half, almost a triple-double. Really balanced stuff on the other side for the Cardinal. But you thought the freshman Haley Jones really stepped up in a big way in the second quarter, some key buckets. Yeah, she was looking for her own offense. She was putting the ball on the floor, getting inside. She was pulling up. I mean, she has size and strength and speed at the guard spot. And I just loved in the moment when Oregon was making runs, when the crowd was getting into it, she had no problem putting it on her shoulders. And that's a big mature step for a freshman. Slow start for Oregon. Much better in the second quarter. They outscored Stanford by 10 in the second frame. The Hall Twins very key in this first half. Inescu, though, responsible for two-thirds of the offense so far, whether scoring or assisting. Same 10 that began the game, start the second half. Ducks have their largest lead at six as we begin the third quarter. Stanford led by as many as seven in the opening frame. Nice pass fake by Keanu Williams, and that opens her up for another three. Beautiful job against the zone. You see Stanford move the basketball. Not enough people, especially against zones, use the ball fake. You saw the whole defense shift. She was able to get a clean look at the three. Five threes from Stanford. Ionescu off target.
single. You said it. She can step out and hit from that distance. She hits from long range. Nice patience, these first couple of possessions by Stanford, because early in the first half, or throughout the first half, I thought they were rushing some shots because they wanted to play at the pace that they desired, so they might sacrifice a good look in order to get a quick look. Not so here in the start of the third quarter. Aaron Boley, great three-point shooter, just her second attempt of the night. Ionescu knew it was off target when she let it fly. We got a whistle and a foul called. Holly, you can talk to Tara Vanderveer at halftime. That's right, and one of the things she told me has already come true here in the second half. She said, we need more out of Kiana Williams. We see her get that three-point shot. They want her being more aggressive. They also want to be more aggressive attacking the basket. And third, they don't think they've done a good enough job on Sabrina Unesco. 15 first half points look for them to be a little more aggressive on her defensively. Attacking the basket right there. Yep. Haley Jones going for and then able to get on the glass for Hull. Tough shot by Williams, and she draws the foul. Mignon Moore reached in and got tagged with her first foul of the night. Taylor Chavez will check in. Aaron Boley is going to hit the bench. Boley has really struggled as of late. The last three games, just one for ten from three-point range. This was a better than 40% shooter a season ago. Williams at the line. I mean... That's her specialty, right? Is to be a deadly three-point shooter. And, and when you're struggling with your shot, <laughs> that's why you're out on the floor. It's hard to stay there. How about Stanford? The first seven out of the gate here in the second half. They've regained the advantage. Inesco with a little pocket pass to Heber. Sobley there under the rim. Ends up drawing a foul. Fingal didn't mean to trip her. She was reaching out to make sure she was okay. After all that, it is a Fingal foul for the senior from Florida. Just say Fingal foul one more time. Fingal foul from Florida. This is the type of alliteration you get on Thursday night. But that's what Kelly Graves wants to see, right? From yep. Sabali. Be aggressive. Get to the offensive glass. A Saturday night. A huge day on ESPN, and it's highlighted by Conor McGregor's return against Donald Cowboy Cerrone in UFC 246. Preliminary rounds begin on ESPN, and ESPN Deportes starting at 8 Eastern. And then McGregor and Cowboy on ESPN Plus exclusively at 10 o'clock Eastern time. I think your nickname should be Cowboy. Adam Cowboy Amin. When you think Adam Amin, you think Cowboy, undoubtedly. Good feed from Hall. Fingal was open, but missed the three. Mignon Moore running the break. Unescu, little hesitation to get inside. Good rotation to Moore. She's been trying to be better from three. Unescu the rebound. She's open for three and she'll take it. Great possession for Oregon. Sabali could have taken a three early in that possession. Instead, they move the ball around. Everyone touches it. They get to the offensive glass and still end up with a three. Lexi for Lacey this time. Another rebound for Ionescu. Sabrina Ionescu. back buckets it just feels like she has the ability at any point to take over a game and it feels like it may be one of those moments where you might have to shut her down if you're Stanford Kiana Williams with a clutch tray huge shot huge shot it's those shots throughout the game as the momentum's building and yeah. you can hit them big plays Tara Vanderveer wanted to see how her team comported itself in a big atmosphere like this where they've made big baskets when the crowd has really gotten into it Lacey Hall picks up her second foul, sending Heber to the line. Sabrina Ionesco, you see here, she's got such instinct to get to the offensive glass, gets the ball back behind the men's three-point line and hits it, and then on the pick and roll there, she comes up. I mean, she reads it so beautifully. For teammates open, she's going to deliver it, yep. but if they're not, she's going to decide and figure out, all right, do I have the drive or do I pull it up? Sometimes it seems like she's just willing the ball in, too. Such a competitor. 
Guys, you know, I actually talked to Sabrina right now about something that she feels like she's got to improve in her game as good as she is. And she said, you know, I think I'm over-reading the defensive times. I've got to limit my turnovers. I feel like I'm over-passing. So that was a great situation. Read the defense, made the great pass. But she's very aware of limiting those turnovers. The only thing that she had to criticize about her game so far this season. Nice pass there to Lacey Hall from Haley Jones. Six turnovers in that game against Arizona. And in the postgame interview, Ionescu didn't know she had a triple-double because she was more upset about the turnovers that she had as Mignon Moore puts in a bucket. Good help defense from Oregon, forcing another Stanford turnover. Boy, Moore was calling for the ball back, wanted to take it in, and draws the foul. Foul will go against Haley Jones, her first. I just needed a change of scenery. That was Mignon Moore's thought about leaving USC after three years, coming to a place where she would have an opportunity to potentially win a national championship. Much different player, though, than essentially the player she's replacing in Maite Kazorla, who got drafted in the top ten of the WNBA. Yeah, I Mignon Moore, you know, has a defensive focus when she's out on the floor. Maite was kind of a maestro herself in the pick and roll and getting players where they wanted to be. I mean, is this the first time ever that someone who's been in L.A. says they need a change of scenery? <laughs> If you're going to ch choose some scenery, this is good scenery. Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> one of the jewels of the Northwest. Jones off target. Rebounded by Sabali. Oregon has matched its largest lead halfway through the third. Inescu, the drive. Seven in the third. Ducks lead by eight. Their largest lead of the night. Sabrina Ionesco brings so much to the floor. She can hit threes, we know that. She can drive, we know that. And she knows when to do each. They're Oregon on a 6-0 run. Sabrina Ionescu, the ability to take over games. Seven here in the third quarter. She's got 22 on the night. Closing in on the all-time Oregon scoring record held by Allison Lang, who scored better than 2,250 points. And UNESCO has the Ducks out by eight, their largest lead of the night. She's never had a 30-point triple-double. She's had two 29-point triple-doubles. Still has some ways to go, three more rebounds and six more assists. And Stanford needs to bear down right now as they face their largest deficit in a tough atmosphere. So where do they go? Where does Tara Vandeveer want to go out of this timeout? <laughs> Fingal's got a small, she had a small on her. Yeah. Don't re-screen, get inside the paint and post up the guard. That's a few times that they've missed on a mismatch. Still eight on the shot clock for Stanford on the other side. Welcome back to Oregon Stanford. I am here with Neko Wumake, the president of the WNBA Players Association and historic news in women's sports this week as the WNBA negotiated what's one of the most progressive collective bargaining agreements and really pushing the WNBA forward with salaries. What are you the most proud of that you and your teams have been able to accomplish? I mean, of course, Holly, like, you know, we have a lot of uh, player experience and um, health and wellness and, of course, our benefits with motherhood and child planning. Um, of course, everyone waited to see about the salary and compensation, which is elevated as well. But what I'm most proud of as the president is the um, engagement from the players. We had the best voter turnout that we've ever had in the history of voting. Okay, so when you were playing at Stanford, I always knew you would run the world one day, but now you actually are. How were you able to get all those people to work together in that moment and then to get the league to agree to it? 
I mean, it wasn't just me. You know, I have an amazing EC. What's up, Sue? Um, Sue has definitely been a Sue Bird. Huge... <laughs> yes, yeah, Sue. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knows, but yeah. Sue, Chanae, Elasia, Ale uh, Elena Deladon, Elizabeth Williams, and Carolyn Swords. We restructured our um, constitution in which now our EC is a seven-member team rather than a five-member team. And we really gathered together and made sure that we took care of every single player. Okay, I want to get back to the game quickly. This young Stanford roster, how proud of you of what Tara Vandeveer, your coach, has assembled here for the Cardinal? I mean, first of all, not only is Stanford great, Oregon is great. We had the pleasure of being able to play here um, in November against Oregon, which is awesome. But I obviously, Stanford is home for me. And it's so amazing to see so much young talent. We have Haley Jones, and of course, we have Franny um, out here really just doing what Stanford does. Great All right. <laughs> president of the Players Association, president of the country one day. I, know. <laughs> I, will, I will be your campaign manager. We're just putting it out I there to the world. I can agree to that. I can agree to that. Okay. Yes. Neko Gumke, love you so much. Thank love you. Too. Thank you. Willing it into existence. Speak it into existence, Holly Rowe. Late in the clock, Ionescu. Hoist up a three. Offensive rebound. Savali to put back in a foul. Kelly Graves wanted Satu Sabli to play harder and be more involved and more engaged. Well, you see it right here. Getting on the offensive glass with one hand, finishing through contact. We've seen that a couple times here tonight where she's found ways to be involved offensively by getting to the glass. A challenge, as Holly told us about earlier, a challenge from Kelly Graves to Satu Sabli. Feels like in key spot she has responded. And Oregon has taken its largest lead at 11. Three minutes to go in the third. And Stanford starting to see the threat unravel a little bit right now. What we're seeing right now is a little bit what we saw a week ago with Baylor and UConn. And that was a team with a lot of experience, kind of settling down, playing in the moment, and then a team with less experience, making some mistakes and allowing the other team to get separation. Stanford brought in the number two recruiting class in the country behind South Carolina this past year. Oregon has one of the top classes coming in next season, so the Pac-12 well represented, you would think, talent-wise at the top, and certainly has been the most competitive and arguably strongest conference in the country so far. You know, we heard, heard Holly talking to Neko McKay, and, and the Oregon team beat the U.S. national team. Yeah. And, and after watching that game, I was thinking, man, how is Oregon going to lose a game this season? And then they go and lose to Louisville um, and, and shot really poorly in that game. This past weekend, Arizona State beats them. And Kelly Graves told us this morning, we don't always play hard. Yeah. And that's one thing we've seen tonight is an Oregon team that's really playing hard. But they have to sustain this every single game. That's what champions do, consistently play hard. Williams able to draw a foul on her way to the rim. Mignon Moore picks up her second foul. 13 of the last 15 points belong to Kelly Graves' squad. Fran Belibi will check back into the game. Haley Jones will get a breather. The Sports Center is coming up as soon as we're done in Eugene. Tim Legler will break down Celtics and Bucks. We'll have an interview with Connor McGregor as he prepares for the Cowboy on Saturday. And then a fallout from this Major League Baseball cheating scandal. Carlos Beltran, who was recently named the Mets manager, loses that job just weeks before pitchers and catchers are scheduled to report. That's all coming up on Sports Center on ESPN. Is your arm buzzing? It is. Sabali. Hard foul, and we'll go against Spingle, her second. When Satu Sabali is engaged, she is so good. Yeah. At 6'4", she can shoot the three, she drives so well. And you look at her, what a great pro prospect she is because of her athletic ability and size. You mentioned the upset over the national team. You know, UNESCO gets a lot of attention for it, rightfully so. Sabali was the best player on the floor in that game yeah. for the Kelly Graves. 
And, you know, we actually asked Satu today, do you understand that you're the best floor player on the floor in almost every game you're in? And she said, I do understand it. She said, but I have got to be more focused and really show more determination. I need to crash every time. And she believes that if she plays with the focus and determination and aggressiveness that she has, she can be one of the best players in the world eventually. If she were to come out, she right now on a lot of draft sites, a lot of mock drafts, would be a top three WNBA pick. Yeah. Paul, Ionescu wanted the traveling violation, and a foul is called against Ionescu. It'll be her first. Stanford is in the bonus, so that does lead to free throws coming. Well, maybe the hand on her arm. Maybe. If that's what the indicator was for a foul. And that was the last foul to give Stanford in the bonus the rest of the way in the quarter, but a turnover by Fingal on the inbound. Beautiful pass from Morna Chavez. Knocked away by Heber. Stays with Stanford. Last couple possessions, Oregon's defense has been really, really good. Yeah. And this is a team that has much improved on the defensive end this year from a season ago. But wow, they're fighting through screens. Chavez has done a terrific job with that because Stanford runs a lot of action where they're running their guards off screen. She's fought through it. Ruth Hebert has been on point defensively. Oregon's engaged today. Yeah. They are certainly engaged on both ends of the floor. Williams trying to maneuver, and Oregon forces another turnover. Experience, youth. Starting to show itself late in the third quarter. Inescu one point away from setting the Oregon scoring record. Way off, but got a rebound. <laughs> Just got a rebound on a shot that hit the back of the backboard. Here's Moore stepping in for two. Heber the rebound and off to Ionescu. Shot clock resets to 20 this year. Ionescu for the record. She has just set the all-time Oregon scoring record. 2,253 points. And ran down that rebound, but could not save it. 27 ticks left. The most points, the most three-pointers, the most assists in Pac-12 history, closing in on the men's record, belonging to Gary Payton, one of the great players in the history of college basketball. And how fitting that she did it on a screen from Ruthie Ruthie Hebert. Hebert. Jones, tough shot, Sabali the foul. And Jones will head to the free throw line. First point of the quarter for Haley Jones. What have we seen this quarter from Oregon? Fewer threes, more free throws. Yep. Looking to attack. It's been a much called upon theme for Kelly Graves in the last five or six games. Ionescu for three. Got them all! Allison Lang dethroned at the top of the Oregon scoring list by Sabrina Ionescu. Her dad, Dan, left Romania in 1989, seeking political asylum, hoping for a better life for his family. Who would have thought that he'd watch his daughter become one of the greatest players in college basketball history?
Ionescu and the Ducks on top by 17. In her 125th career start for the Oregon Ducks, she gets to better than 2,250 plus points, passing Allison Lang for the all-time record, a 29-point performance holly for Sabrina Ionescu tonight. It's amazing where her career started as a little kid. Her dad said, you know, I was always tired coming home after work. I would drop her and her brother off at the park so they could burn some energy, kind of as a babysitter in some respects. And she and her brother Eddie would hustle people for money. They'd try to pretend like they couldn't play. They would say, hey, if you'll give us a couple of bucks, we'll play you in basketball. They would earn money and go to 7-Eleven and get Slurpees. Yep. So she started out as a hustler. Uh, Diana Tarazi said in a great article today on ESPN.com, she has an immigrant mentality in that she was going to come to this country and work hard, just like Diana Tarazi and her family. And we are seeing that work ethic in Sabrina Ionescu. Her dad left Romania seeking political asylum around the 89 revolution. The rest of the family joined him in 1995. Sabrina and Eddie were born in 1997 in California, but they take the lessons they've learned from their dad, Dan, and have applied it to a good portion of their college careers. And she and her twin brother, Eddie, very, very tight, as you can imagine. She could buy the whole arena Slurpees tonight. <laughs> Man, the way she's taken over, looking for her own offense. Heber, tough turnaround. Oregon leading by 19. And the other thing to point out on the other side for Stanford, Tara Vanderveer said this too, nothing's going to be determined in one game in Eugene for this team. This is January. There's still a long way to go. These two teams are going to play down at Maples once again. Stanford's going to have some key stretches where they'll have, uh, I hesitate to say this because the Pac-12 has been so good, but some lighter schedule stretches coming up, whereas Oregon's going to have some tougher games coming up. So there's still a long way to go for this Stanford team. With all the youth that they have, still a long way to grow as well. And Tara Vanderveer knows that. I mean, we saw it last year with Stanford. They yeah. lost by 40 to Oregon in the regular season, came back and beat them in the Pac-12 championship and game. And didn't lose a game until they got to the Elite Eight. Inescu, the floater. <laughs> now, the last two possessions for Stanford, they had a turnover and then a, a terrible shot. You know, that went out of bounds. And Tara Vanderveer was telling her team, Three things we have to do. Take care of the basketball, box out, and run on Oregon. And they haven't really been able to do any of those. And the turnovers have been something that is, has been a real problem here against Oregon. Going the other way to Oregon. Again, uses the screen. The defender gets hung up just a little bit. The help defender, the bigs defender doesn't get there. She'll just stop on a dime and hit the mid-range. Melissa Jerome, junior from Canada, picked up the foul. Stanford's only scored four points in about the last eight minutes. Vanessa with a nice feed to Moore. Vanessa has got six assists now, one rebound shy of a double double. Blocked by Savoli. Haley Jones turned around, and the long arm of the junior from Berlin was there. Again, I, I've been really impressed with Oregon's defense, in particular here in the second half. More of the step back. There's Savoli, another rebound. One end, Sabli comes over as a help defender, gets the block shot here. She gets another possession with an offensive board. This is what Kelly Graves needs to see from her every single night. Inescu to the rim. And this is turning into a rout in Eugene. Prechtel draws the foul on Ruthie Heber. 
Well, 4 and 6 Eastern on ESPN on Saturday and the ESPN app. We'll see top 10 Kentucky on the road against Arkansas. But then our sonic blockbuster, Holly Roll, will be there for Louisville and Duke. Tell me about the Cardinals and the Blue Devils, my friend. Well, Duke is coming off a loss to Clemson, so they have got to regroup and regroup quickly. But I'll tell you what, I have breaking news that the 94 feet with Jay Billis, Jordan Mora from Louisville, you cannot wait. you got to tune in. I love it. Can't wait to watch you, Dan and Jay, on the call on Saturday night. College game day, by the way, debuting on Saturday as well from the KFC Yum Center. Nice pocket pass to Heber. Battling for the rebound. It will stay here with Oregon. Expanding on UNESCO a little bit. That's actually one thing that Tara Vanderveer pointed out. The pocket passing is what really separates UNESCO and a lot of other point guards. I mean, her timing and her delivery are terrific. I would love to know. <laughs> Sobley for three. Shot by Sobley. I would love to know how many of Sabrina Ionescu's assists are to Ruthie Hebert, how many of her points come as a result of a screen from Ruthie Hebert. Those two, peanut butter and jelly, right? They yep. just go together so well. Or are you a fluff guy, no, peanut butter no, no, and fluff? No, 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 stick with the jelly. I'm, I'm good. I'm not against the fluff. But let's not make this an indictment against fluff. I'm saying let's stick with peanut butter and jelly for me. I mean, in a route with 6.07 to go, sometimes <laughs> there's to, fluff. I'm willing, to, willing, to try, I'm willing to try some different things at this point in the game. Hebert will head to the bench. Might be done for the night. Sabali and Ionescu, by the way, each with double-doubles in this game. And Sabali grabs another rebound and draws a Fingal foul. How's that for Fluff? I like it. I have so enjoyed watching Pac-12 women's basketball this year. Awesome this year. The crowds have been amazing. The competition has been terrific. It's crushing my bedtime, <laughs> but it is good basketball. I suggest all of you this season in particular, make sure you schedule for a little sleep in time the next morning. Yeah. You're going to want to stay up for a lot of these games. They are gonna, listen, Oregon's not coming out of this more, you know, unscathed. Oregon State dropped the game last week. Arizona and Arizona State have played some great ball this year. UCLA has had the longest undefeated run of any Pac-12 team so far. Yanescu draws the foul, will head to the line. And we've seen teams challenge other teams in the Pac-12, the higher ranked teams in the Pac-12 so far this year. This is the deepest, again, you can argue it certainly what you define as depth, but in terms of ranked teams, in terms of high quality teams night in and night out. I can't imagine Oregon and Oregon State and Stanford, for that matter, not going the rest of the year and not losing at least a couple more just because yeah. that's the grind of the season. Right now, all's ringing in my head is Bill Walton saying, Sabrina, Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina. <laughs> Conference of Champions, actually. He's uh, out in Tempe right now, calling Colorado, Arizona State on the men's side. Lydia Giomi knocked it away. They're going to call over and back, so they must have ruled that home and maintain possession of the front court and then brought it in. Again, the tenacity of the defense by Oregon when you're, you have this kind of a lead and you're still playing that hard. Love to see it. Timeout from Stanford. Oregon has scored 42 of the last 55 points. combined titles first meeting since 2007 will be at the XL Center next Thursday night for the rivalry renewed as Tennessee and UConn square off for the 23rd time all time how old were you the last time UConn played Tennessee I was a so junior in college it's like <laughs> it's been too I long 20, it's been I was too 21 long. years old at that point Man, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a great atmosphere some key wins. Tennessee has had some impressive victories this year. And a new era under Kelly Harper, former Kelly Jolly, who knows that rivalry. 
Sabrina Ionescu still playing in a 29-point blowout. She's four assists away from what would be the most productive offensive triple-double of her career. She's never had a 30-point triple-double. Giomi will go to the free throw line. You know, we were talking throughout the game, uh, you know, how Stanford wants to push the pace. Right. And see if they can tire out Oregon. Well, this is a different Oregon team from last year in that they have more depth. Yes. And I feel like they have looked fresh, especially on the defensive end, especially in the latter parts of this game. They have not looked fatigued at all. The defensive percentages, points per game, all that is down this year for Oregon opponents. And UNESCO, very impressive once again. One off shy, uh, one off tying her career high that she had in the 2018 Pac-12 championship that Oregon won. Of course, last year Stanford repaid the favor. See, I don't think it's because it's against Stanford. I think it's because all of those have been on ESPN. She likes to show up for the national audience, that's for sure. Mignon Moore gets a nice round of applause as she goes to the bench. But for Oregon, it's going to be about their big three. Yeah. And their big three all played really well here today. Satu Sabli, Ruthie Hebert, Sabrina really showed out. But it's tough to beat a team who has three talented players at those positions like Oregon. Sabli against Belibi. Shelly dribbling into traffic, finding Giomi. And a foul called on Lexi Hall. It's going to get tougher for Oregon going forward. They've got Cal on Sunday, and then don't forget what happens next weekend. It's Civil War weekend with the two games against Oregon State. They're home next Friday and then in Corvallis next Sunday. And they've got a brutal February including a key non-conference game against UConn in stores, which may go a long way in helping determining seating for both of those teams come NCAA tournament time. Then you got both Arizona schools, and then you got to go on the road to UCLA, which is sitting in the top ten. So I think the challenge becomes, all right, it's going to be easy to get up for the games next weekend in the Civil War. It's going to be easy to get up for that UConn game on February 3rd. But are you going to bring this same intensity as Sabali gets the the ovation from the crowd. Is Satu Sabli, is the entire Oregon team going to get up on Sunday for yeah. Cal? Can you for, do that? Yeah. Can you do it every single night? Because that is what champions do. Well, there's no denying the talent. And Kelly Graves knows he his team needs to bring it. Jenna Brown is in the game for Stanford. As is Estella Moscow. Here's Bellini. Nice job waiting for the defender to clear. And a nice pass by Brown yeah. inside. Holly Winterburn, the England native, is on the floor. Here's Bowley trying to get on the board. Maybe that'll help her on Sunday going into that game against Cal. She's been really struggling. Yeah, I mean, she hasn't even played that much in this game. Yeah. I think that was only her third shot attempt of the night. Unesco now with seven assists. Brown with a nice pass to Prechtel. Inside of three to play. Pick and pop, looking for another assist. Bowley can't hit the three, though. We saw Kelly Graves yell at UNESCO a couple times. Hey, Sam, I think indicating, or at least asking to see if she wants to come out of the game. But really, who's going to say yes? I can't imagine <laughs> wanting to say yes. This for a career high. And that might do it. A career best 37 points on a historic night for Sabrina Ionescu.
Back in Eugene, Belibi going to the line, drawing a foul. 30-point lead on a 37-point career best night scoring for Sabrina Ionescu. Almost every time she steps on the floor, probably every time she steps on the floor, she's the most competitive player out there, and that takes her so far. I mean, she just took over this game tonight on the there's offensive that, end. There's that stretch in the third quarter. Yeah, she was just looking for her own shot. I mean, for a pass first guard, but there were times, all right, this game is too close. It's on me to take the shot, and she did. Oregon team that has done historic things with UNESCO at the helm. Uh, this offense going back to her freshman year where they made a deep run, went to the Elite Eight for the first time. Did it again in 2018. Really competitive game in that Elite Eight against Notre Dame. And then last year made their first Final Four. Pac-12, as competitive as it's been, hasn't had a national champ, though, since Tara Vanderveer's team hoisted the title back in 1992. Could this be the year where a Pac-12 team finally gets back to the top? Nice shot by Chavez. So happy that Sabrina Ionescu came back for her senior year. Yeah. Because she was eligible for the draft, the WNBA draft a year ago, would have been the number one pick for Las Vegas. Came back. She's going to be the number one pick for the New York Liberty, most yep. likely. Yep. But to get another chance, no, another no, year no. to watch her play oh, with this team as they continue their quest and unfinished business for a national championship, what a treat for women's basketball fans in the country. And certainly part of the marquee for this season. And that was probably the biggest news of the preseason. Hey, UNESCO's coming back. Oregon's number one. They beat the U.S. national team this exhibition game. And the rest of the season has followed suit. Four number one teams so far. Upset after upset after upset in the top ten. I mean, buckle, up, buckle up for the last month and a half, two months. Gone are the days where it was an automatic win for a ranked team over an unranked team. Yeah. And we've seen that in the SEC already this year. Moscow misses the three. Bowley with a steal. Final 50 seconds. Here in Eugene in front of 12,218 fans, a season high. Winterburn will go to the free throw line for a nope, traveling violation, beg your pardon. I just wanted to say Winterburn more. <laughs> Great name, Northampton, England zone. Well, these two teams have recruited really well. <laughs> these last couple of recruiting classes for these two clubs have been awesome to see. We'll see what happens at Maples Pavilion. Oregon won their last year. And Stanford repaid the favor of the Pac-12 title game. This is just one game in a long season. But it was a fun one if you were wearing green and yellow tonight. <laughs> Round one belongs to the Ducks behind a career night from Sabrina Ionescu. A career-high 37 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. Holly, she set the all-time Oregon scoring record tonight. Sabrina Ionescu with an impressive 38-minute performance this evening at home against Stanford. Well, we've seen, we saw tonight what Oregon can be. And when they have their big three rolling like they were rolling, and when Sabrina Ionescu is playing like this, watch out. This is a team, of course, that can win a national championship. And this Stanford team is going to continue to improve, and they will be in the picture as well come March. Holly? A big win for your group over the number third ranked team in the country, Stanford. The huge celebration. Why was this such a big win in your mind? I mean, this is huge for us, of course, coming in and, and playing Stanford. 
Uh, they're a great team, well coached, and I think we had some unfinished business when they beat us uh, last year. So great, great win for our team. It's awesome to be able to do it in front of this home crowd. You scored a new career high tonight. Why were you so mindful of your offense? I was just ready to go. I didn't want to lose. Um, that mid-range shot was there. I was forcing it a little bit in the beginning, but uh, my shot was going to come to me, and it did. Tonight, you put your name as number one all-time in the career record scoring book. What does that mean to you that you will stand atop that list forever? I mean, as long as we're winning, it doesn't really matter if I score zero or if I score 30. I don't know how many I had tonight, um, but it's an awesome, uh, awesome accomplishment. Couldn't have done it without my team and my coaches, so uh, really, really honored and humbled to be in this position. A huge win for the Pac-12 Pac as well. Why was this important in the standings? I mean, they're, they're a great team, and they're, they're great year in and year out, so this was huge for us and huge for the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Thank you. 87 to 55, the final. They'll meet again at Maples later this month. For Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, the great women and men of our crew, Adam Amin saying so long. From Eugene, Kenny and Zubin, M Sports Center.